Hi, I'm John Sheldon, and today I'll be presenting on the gun control in the United States. Uh, first, I'll start off by with the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. A well-regulated militia, comma, being necessary to the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, comma, shall not be infringed. So, to begin with, that was ratified on December 15th, 1971 by Thomas Jefferson. Um, and to keep this argument neutral, uh, Democrats argue with Republicans and back and forth constantly, all the time. Uh, Democrats say that the amendment refers to a militia, uh, specifically like a National Guard, um, rather than the general public possessing the guns. And Republicans are the opposite, saying that the phrase, the right of the people, is the essence of the Hulk uh, amendment, uh, and is the most important part, giving the right to the general population. So, uh, I also make reference to McDonald in Chicago, or versus the city of Chicago and District Columbia versus Heller. Uh, McDonald versus Chicago, uh, the decision of the Supreme Court of the United States found uh, that the right of an individual to keep and bear arms as protected under the Second Amendment is incorporated into the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. Um, like, like in the District Columbia versus Heller. Um, there's a split decision, five to four, the second, uh, by the Supreme Court, the Second Amendment protects an individual's rights to possess a firearm unconnected with the service of a militia for traditionally lawful purposes, such as self-defense within a home. Uh, and basically, the difference between these two is that uh, DC versus Heller came first in 2008 and did not in the ruling did not include the uh, incorporation of the due process clause and uh, that's where the McDonald in Chicago came in which came uh, which happened in 2010 which uh, accentuated that part um, and as for uh, problems and concerns uh, with gun control in the United States uh, my first example is misinformed and undereducated public. Uh, the two biggest statistics uh, that the news oftentimes uh, misconcepts is that uh, the way the way they portray stories and mass shootings and shootings in general, homicides, uh, they they depict it to be at an all-time high, but in all reality, according to the FBI, uh, homicide rate is the lowest point since the 1960s approximately 4.5 homicides per 100,000 people, um, which is this graph here. And uh, accompanying that, uh, gun ownership is an all-time high. So that includes everything that is legally registered with the United States government. Uh, and to get that, they got the manufactured guns plus the imported guns minus the exported. So. Uh, that is approximately 16 million guns in the United States legally possessed. So, to branch off of that, um, misinformed and undereducated about gun laws. This applies to concealed carry uh, and open carry laws predominantly. Um, many, many states offered a concealed carry permit. Um, my home state of Pennsylvania, very easy to apply for uh, compared to California where it's extremely difficult to get it at all. Um, and then st uh, states such as Texas permit open carry, which is just openly carrying on your hip and no one can do anything about it. Um, and for, uh, to go along with that, automatic weapons, uh, people will we're saying that the Las Vegas shooting is he, the shooter used uh, an automatic weapon, which in a way he did, but technically is incorrect. Uh, it's a semi-automatic gun modified to shoot uh, fully automatic. Um, people say, oh, well, automatic weapons should be banned. No one should be able to allow to have them. But a, a law created in 1986 uh, outlawed all automatic weapon sales unless you have a class two to five gun license, which is hard to get. You have to apply through uh, the 
Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. And basically, um, class two weapons is just the basics. Uh, sawed off uh, barrels on your weapons. Uh, class three is silenced weapons and military grade weapons. And then class four is the uh, explosives. Uh, for basic gun knowledge, uh, uh, it comes down to knowing types of guns, the effective use of guns, and how they each function. Uh, for type, there's handgun, rifle, uh, which can be open, or, uh, fully automatic, semi-automatic, pump action, bolt, you pick. There's about five different ways that a gun operates, and effective ranges of bullets. Uh, recently, where I'm from, there was a shooting, uh, and the, the man claims that he shot from about 200 yards away with a pistol, which is very ina inaccurate in claims. And that's, it goes back to the Vegas shooting as well. Uh, people are saying, well, why didn't the cops shoot back? The, the shooter was about two football fields away from where the actual, uh, where he was shooting from, so there was no effective uh, bullet from a pistol that could have been, uh, could have been used. Uh, and as for the Second Amendment, uh, it can be taken away. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's an amendment for a reason. Take example the 18th Amendment, which was prohibition, and the 21st Amendment, which was legal, re-legalization of alcohol. And for, I have Kevin DeLeon uh, as an example for this. He's a former California senator, and I'm going to pull up a quick video to show. This is a ghost gun. This right here has ability with a 30 caliber clip to disperse with 30 bullets within half a second. 30 magazine clip in half a second. So basically that just backs up my point of uh, the United States government being misinformed. When he referred to a 30 caliber magazine, uh, first of all, that's very incorrect. The caliber, caliber refers to the width of the bullet instead of the round capacity of a magazine, which he was correct, a, a weapon that of that style usually holds about a 30 round magazine but he also refers to it as a clip and a clip it usually works with a bolt action rifle uh, fed down through the top uh, instead of projecting the bullet upward into the chamber um, and guns of that style he claims shoots 30 rounds every half second uh, on average that's it's a little, a little dramatic size. Uh, in reality, they shoot between 12 and 15 bullets per second. So my second problem with this is making firearms won't fix the, or making firearms illegal won't fix the problem. Uh, there isn't much else to say about this. Making drugs illegal hasn't stopped the problem. It's only skyrocketed, and then making firearms illegal would be taking away the guns from the good people, letting the bad people have them, and you know, the homicide rate will inevitably stay the same or go up. And firearms falling into the wrong hands. Uh, under US Code 18, is that a subset, 922? Section 922, uh, also known as the Gun Control Act of 1964, and it is the Federal Firearm Possession Prohibition Law, which basically uh, pro states that felons, the mentally unstable, dishonorably discharged military members and illegal aliens, um, but are uh, illegally, uh, are, are not allowed to legally possess a gun in the United States under any circumstances. And along with felony, even if you have a misdemeanor charge for domestic violence, you're still on the, on the uh, uh, no gun list. So which brings me to uh, Adam Lanza. He was the uh, Sandy Hook shooter. Um, 
just to give a reminder of how dark he was, uh, he killed 27 people that day in Newtown, Connecticut, 20 of them children, six staff of a school, and his own mother. Um, he was mentally disabled. Um, it's reported that he was diagnosed with autism, Asperger's, OCD, and upon his death, they believe they missed a diagnosis of schizophrenia. Um, because of this, his mother was instructed to keep firearms out of the home just to, uh, as a liability. Um, so nothing like this was to happen. She obviously didn't, and we all know what happened there. And most recently, uh, Devin Kelly, he was the shooter of the most recent uh, mass shooting uh, in Sutherland Springs, uh, Texas. He was dishonorably discharged in 2014 from the U.S. Air Force, um, and that's coming from Ann Stefanek, uh, an Air Force uh, spokeswoman. Um, he was he was charged with two assault charges uh, for beating his wife and his stepson, and ultimately discharged from the military for being or for bad conduct in 2014. And to to counteract what I'm trying to make the point of here. Um, bad people will get guns one way or another. Uh, even if it's mentally disabled where they're not specifically uh, named, well they're specifically named a threat, but they they can't buy a gun. And Adam Stans or Lanza's uh, case, there was guns in the house. And this, uh, Devin Kelly, dishonorably discharged, can't buy a firearm, ended up shooting 27 people in a church in Texas with uh, an assault rifle. So, possible solutions to all these problems is public education <clears throat> and tighter regulations to obtain firearms legally. Education, uh, possible solution for this is integration uh, of firearm knowledge into high school education. This includes basic knowledge, which I already talked about, self-defense, and what to do in emergency situations. Um, school systems already preach uh, sexual education and drug ed education in high school. And to, to relate this to sex ed, well, they used to preach no sex, no sex, no sex. And recently, they shifted that from no sex to practice safe sex. So what's the difference between uh, practicing safe sex or practicing safe gun use? It's all, it all comes down to education. And as for tighter regulations, improving background checks, it, it, it has to happen. Um, uh, this is supported by Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Uh, an article came out in the New York Times on October 22nd uh, about what the Attorney General had to say. Um, this was following the Sutherland Springs church shooting. He said, um, people, basically to sum up the article, people fall through the cracks sometimes going through background checks and we need to, or the government needs to readjust how they do it and make sure everything is accounted for, nobody misses anything, <coughs> and uh, things like this are easier to prevent because the wrong people don't get the guns. Um, include, this could possibly include a mental health screening, um, and it relates to the possible model of Japan's requirements for owning a firearm. Uh, Japan's gun control model. Uh, in order to get a gun in Japan, which is complete polar opposite of what the United States uh, gun control policy is, uh, they have very, very low uh, death rates. Uh, 2011, they had two homicides documented in the country. Uh, so, but the gun control model, it includes a one-day class followed by a written test followed by a shooting range test. And then once you pass the first three, you have to go to a hospital, uh, pass a mental health screening and drug test, uh, finally pass a very rigorous, in-depth uh, background check that goes as deep as to see if you have any relations to anybody with relations to, um, to like gang-related activity with the Yakuza 
or just gun violence in general. And then if you pass all of that, you are permitted to have your guns and the police inspection or police inspect your home uh, for your firearms and ammo. They have to be locked up in different places and uh, and then if it's if you're out of spec, they take your license and you have to, if possible at all, you have to re redo all the steps if you really want them that bad. So in conclusion, uh, all of what I've tried to say is we have a people problem in the country, not a gun problem. Guns fall into the wrong hands and they're mishandled, which results in death. Uh, Vegas shooter, no one knows the real motive, but something, he was mentally unstable somewhere. We may never know the reason, but um, it, it happened. Wrong person with the wrong gun. Uh, education is the best prevention. Uh, and, and no governmental ruling will end this debate. Democrats and Republicans will always go back and forth say, saying they, each other is wrong when there's no middle ground to be found. So we have to come to some kind of compromise in the middle to make both parties happy. And overall, guns should not be banned. They're one of the leading industries in the United States economy. And don't, the saying goes, don't label the many because of the few. It, it, I, don't, I don't understand how uh, everyone can be labeled for just a few, um, just a few actions. Any questions? And here's my sources. Um, all my Japan information came from David B. Coppola, Gun Control in 1993. Uh, the model still exists to this day, relatively unchanged. Um, my Chicago, or McDonald versus Chicago and DC versus Heller, uh, that came from Michael, uh, which I greatly appreciated. And this link, or this at the top is for the Attorney General's um, the Attorney General's stance on background checks and the, the rest are the um, <clears throat> the US codes uh, FBI the FBI data and so forth 